it's a bit of a warning um, about traveling it changes your perspective on things uh, there's a lot of the anti-muslim thing about at the moment for example I've spent time in the Middle East I've spent time with different people from different races etc and a lot of people just like us but I see a lot of people go I hate them I hate them etc et I I can understand to some point you know I've seen Somalians have no interest in working in the UK um, not all of them but I would say even Somalians recognize as a problem within their own community um, I used to look after a housing estate uh, which which is in the heartland of Birmingham um, and there there's a lot of tension on there because they've got the asylum seekers moving into this house the next door haven't had any maintenance done for the last 15 years and the house that the asylum seekers have moved into is carpeted, curtains, telephone, TV, washing machine, tumble dryer, blah 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 and it's all paid for by the taxpayer but at the same time I understand from both sides if I was a neighbour I'd be like well I've been paying my taxes why are they getting something they're not from here and then you look at the other guys and they go but if I was in that situation where I've lost everything would I like a society that is big enough to turn around and say well we'll take care of you um, until you go home so that's why it becomes very hard to actually um, make it make a uh, ill-informed decision because I see it from both sides now the whole thing about Somalia is a confusing one because uh, obviously everybody blames everybody nobody actually talks about the root causes etc so we'll put that to one side but the fact what I'm saying is like I said I see that from both sides where a lot of people like this thing with Syria are going oh we don't want them we don't want them look at them they've got mobile phones they're not poor the average Syrian is not poor they, they do have phones they have cash what they will tell you now is the ones that are from really from Syria hopping a taxi and are going up to the border and spending like seven hundred dollars on the taxi ride they're not it's nothing to do with money it's about escaping a war now I'm not being funny here if you were the guy that was rich enough and smart enough to get on a train get on a bus get in a taxi to get where you were going or the guy that's walking for the next hundred 200 miles and in hoping to hobo it on the back of a train or something which guy would you want to come into your country the one that can make money or the one that's just going to be a bird in the state very likely I'll tell you which one I want and that's that's why I say research this stuff in the first place because I see a lot of racist stuff on that on the internet and it's it's manipulated because what the first thing I notice is most of them have political stuff in the background you'll see far right groups and whatever that you know be like uh, Joe's Nazi party is actually sharing the link because when you share it it helps their website well done but the that 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 was a uh, sarcastic well done by the way that wasn't actually <laughs> real well done because the fact is um, I'm more of a person of the world these days and this is what I'm saying your perspective changes it really does now I also understand there's a lot of people abuse stuff here in Spain every time I hear of something majorly uh, happening with all involving theft it involves Romanians of some description and I say some description because a lot of Romanians are tired of the certain communities that commit all the crime as well because I've, I've spoken to some in the UK you know and I say those those are from this group they're nothing to do with me I'm tired of being <laughs> charged with that brush because the fact is there's certain specific groups that do this and it's the same in all societies you know in the US you have your your uh, crazy Bible basher guys 
that um, are preparing for the end of the world sometimes. Those guys aren't the average American. And I don't take it as, you know, as them uh, being the average American. So why would so many people do the same for these other groups? Perspective. Media pushes one side, but it pushes the two wrong sides. Uh, sorry, it pushes two sides, but the two wrong ones. Because there'll be a racial one, and then it'll support the racial one from locals, etc. It's not designed to actually give information. It's designed to act for a, a political agenda. Um, it takes people away from real problems. When I say that, is these numbers, although there might be a million Syrians even, um, across the whole of Europe is nothing. I'll be honest with you, it is insignificant. Cutting family tax credits in the UK for business owners, etc., is financially crippling for over a million people um, that pay their taxes in the UK, and that argument alone should get more publicity in the media. But you can shove the Syrians on the front page and then you bury it. Don't talk about the stuff that's really affecting the UK. Let's target somebody that we can easily like get stuff going so we can hate these people um, and the government does whatever it likes in the background because nobody's actually looking anymore they're so angry I hate Syrians I hate Syrians all this sort of stuff and you think do you know any have you met any where's your, where's your perspectives from the Daily Mail well well informed individual anyway enough ranting your perspective will change because you see people from different societies you see people in their own societies you see different cultures you start to understand where people's perspectives come from you start to go back to the UK or whatever and you're thinking this is crap now that may sound quite harsh but many people do they go back to their own communities and think what did I come here for Andy's only been in Spain I think two weeks now um, and he's gone back to the UK and I messaged him two, three days ago and he's sat there going, I can't wait to get back to Spain, I don't know what I'll come back for. That's not the first time I've heard that argument because the, the thing is, once you've done it, your eyes open up. You, this is, um, well, I've, I've talked about Paul before. Paul was a guy I met many moons ago. His wife's from Thailand <coughs> and... I don't know about his background, but I assume he, did, he struggled to get proper work originally. Um, so his whole perspective changed when he met his wife. Because he'd gone from maybe jobbing job to job to sticking out a really crap job to pay um, for his processing of getting her to the UK, but also to show that he is reliable. Now it's not just to show his wife, it's to actually show the uh, immigration officials that he's reliable. His whole life changed because he had value in it. He had a perspective. He had something that mattered. This is why I say, you know, with a lot of stuff these days, people have nothing in their lives. They're just paying for the banks, etc. They're just paying debt. There's nothing. They get a little bit of happiness buying a new car or something. But then they spend the next five years worrying about the payments. That's not life. That's not living. And I know I'm knocking people out no tomorrow on this video. But I'm just saying there's a whole other world out there. And once you get into it, this is why you'll see some people just living out of a backpack and think they're a bum. They don't know what they're doing. You know, the fact is they're thinking the exact same but in the other way. Um, not that you're a bum but you don't know what you're doing because they've already had their eyes open They're, they've seen mountains they've seen um, small remote villages they've traveled they've experienced the world and it, with that there is no comparison your lives are so far apart by that time that you cannot 
compare notes. You know, your two weeks in Skegness isn't the same as spending a month in some remote camp in a village somewhere. Um, yeah, it's it's very hard to compare once you start doing it. And I know it's um, I think it was Andy this morning. I'm terrible with names. If, if I read all the messages, you probably know as I respond to most of them. But remembering names is terrible for me because um, I'm visual. I've got a very good photographic memory. If I've seen a picture of something, I can remember the picture. If you show me a diagram, I could draw the diagram. But when it comes to people's names, unless I can actually physically see your face, I will never remember your name. I'm terrible at it. It's one of the things I'm not very good at. Um, my wife will tell you. Uh, a little tip, though, is never mention anybody's name if you can help it. I do that a lot. Um, I was explaining to my wife about why I do it. Yeah, it's because I can't remember most people's names most of the time. Because I'll actually just say, oh, nice to see you again, or how are you doing, or stuff. I want to say, hi, John, or whatever, because I won't remember his name's John. But um, anyway, perspective does change significantly. But I would say it makes you a better person for it, because you can see things that most people are being blinkered into and boxed into this little narrow viewpoint where traveling expands it out. Living in Germany, um, you understand the guilt that people feel from World War II. In the UK, there's still a lot of racism around it. They have no idea how, how the German feel, people feel about World War II and what happened. Nobody takes it into account. Nobody cares. But there's a lot of guilt still there, which is why the Syrian thing is as big as it is.